The battle quickly disintegrated into dozens of small onslaughts with brigades and even regiments operating alone. One division broke out of line to avoid a swamp that was on nobody's map. Hundreds fell in the crossfire. The friendly fire took out other hundreds. And those who survived the nightmare of Cold Harbor never forgot what they experienced. An observer stated that the narrow columns of attacking Federals were shredded, quote, much as a sharpener grinds a pencil. The surgeon of the 121st New York wrote, and on all sides, booming cannon and rattling small arms tell us that the angel of death is hovering just over our head. In one of the North Carolina brigades, a Tar Heel soldier exclaimed, the musket fire ran down our lines from left to right like the keys of a piano. Musketry and artillery joined in the wild music of the hour. From the start, the battle assumed the characteristics of a slaughter. No one knows how many times Union columns attacked. The result was always the same. A Billy Yank recalled that his advancing comrades instinctively leaned forward, quote, as if they were marching into the face of a hailstorm. And they fell, he added, like rows of blocks pushed over, by one striking the other. For the 15th Alabama, it was a turkey shoot. Those men were firing as fast as they could because lines of soldiers behind the front line were reloading weapons and handing them forward at a steady pace. Indeed, Alabama Colonel William Oates wrote bluntly, I could see dust pop out of a man's clothing in two or three places at once, where as many balls would strike him at the same moment. In two minutes, not a federal soldier was standing in our front. Cold Harbor could not be called a battle, a Billy Yank concluded. It was simply a, a butchery. By 6 a.m., before the sun had cleared the treetops, the grand attack ended in disastrous failure. At noon, Grant called a halt to the entire operation. Yet fighting continued here and there but simply because the two armies were so close to each other, they could not let go. Grant's first telegram to Washington stated, our loss was not heavy, nor do I suppose the enemy to have lost heavily. And that's one of the most inaccurate reports in all of Civil War history. 